in a big move for AI. We have some really interesting news where essentially we have the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Wang, who has personally delivered the new NVIDIA DGX H200 to OpenAI's headquarters. There is a recent post on X where we had Greg Brockman, of course, the, the co-founder who hasn't been kicked out because he's homies with Sam Altman, with Sam Altman and Jensen in front of this big new, you know, processor at OpenAI's office in San Francisco. I think this is really interesting. So today on the podcast, I want to break down exactly what this new processor is doing, how much you know better it is, and, and some of the, I think, implications for the industry at large. So of course, this is the most advanced AI processor. But you'd expect that this is the newest thing. What's interesting here is that this is specifically designed to be a little bit faster, a little bit more effective than previous versions. It's interesting because Jensen was talking about like who they actually are giving these new H200s to. And he said, you know, he was on an earnings call and he said, we do the best we can to allocate fairly and to avoid allocating unnecessarily. I think the big, I don't know, concern a lot of people are complaining about is like, if he's going and hand delivering this thing to OpenAI's headquarters, then obviously he's homies with them and it's going to be a problem or it's a perceived problem from a lot of the other AI companies where they're like, hey, like, are we not as important? Uh, OpenAI obviously is getting like these things hand delivered. And a lot of these other people are on wait lists just trying to get these uh, processors to the point where like some people are saying whoever can get the processors can be a viable AI company. But like it's so hard that if you don't have them, it's really going to set you back. So anyways, this is all really interesting. But let's get into the specs of what this thing can actually do. How much better is this thing actually? So right now it has a 1.4x increase in memory bandwidth. It has a 1.8x increase in memory capacity compared to the H100. And it has a total memory bandwidth of 4.8 terabytes per second and a memory capacity of 141 gigabytes. So what's really interesting here is that they have the integration of the HBM3E, which is some memory technology they've integrated into this, which essentially is going to allow this thing to be faster for processing. Um, so the processing speeds are faster. It's going to be more efficient in data handling, which is really, really important for training these AI models um, specifically. And you know, when you kind of look at some of this generative AI stuff, this is really important. So recently we had Ian Buck, who's NVIDIA's vice president of high performance computing products. And he was talking about this all. He said the DGX H200's expanded and faster memory is designed to specifically boost performance in computationally intensive tasks, including training sophisticated generative AI models and other high performance computing applications while optimizing the efficiency of GPU utilization. So what I think is really interesting here specifically is it's almost like he's like, hey, this thing is like generally better. And it's also better for AI where it's like, in reality, we know the reason that everyone's like, you know, fighting tooth and nail to get their hands on these things is like for AI training. So it's kind of funny to me that it's just like, also, it's better at AI when, like, in reality, this is what it's, you know, mostly being used for. Now, I have a theory on this, you know, not backed by anything other than my own opinion. But what's interesting is right now we have a bunch of other companies like Grok, for example, that are making new ways of training these AI models. Their processors are essentially using some new architecture where they kind of rebuilt this completely. Um, and they have significant speed improvements. Now, NVIDIA is still the king of the castle because they have all the like the, the manufacturing facilities built out. They have, you know, the capacity and everything. But at the same time, like this is kind of the, the new coming wave of competition that they're going to be facing. Now, what's interesting to me is the fact that right now NVIDIA, they're like, oh, by the way, it's also good for AI. It's not like Grok is specifically built in a way where the architecture is made to just train AI and do it really well and more efficiently, which is awesome. But I almost wonder if they do it in a more general way. I mean, the okay, the obvious answer is they probably are doing this in a more general way because, because this is how they've always done it. And they're, you know, adapting from what used to be like Bitcoin miners and, you know, other things to now this. And so it's not specifically designed for AI. So that's that. But what I think also might be useful is the fact that these are a little bit more general purpose might actually be good um, as far as how they're viewed on a balance sheet for a company like these things are an asset it's sure the company need to liquidate them they can sell them to other companies which can be used for more things than just training ai models so it's kind of interesting that they're they're multi-faceted and that makes them kind of an interesting asset class where you have big companies like inflection and pi for the trained pi for example who literally i think spent almost half a billion dollars on h100s and like that shows up on on their like 
you know, on their like assets because should something happen to the company, it doesn't work, it goes bankrupt. Like that's a literal tangible asset they go around and flip sometimes for more money than they bought them for. So it's just really interesting. It's an interesting place to be in. And maybe this is why NVIDIA won't go to kind of the same route that Grok has went where it's like specifically trained for AI because they kind of want to be a little bit more general purpose. It's, it's more of a general purpose asset. So that's my theory on it in any case. I think right now OpenAI buying these new GDX H200s represents a pretty strategic enhancement in some of the research capabilities. Specifically, right, we're all like holding our breath for when GPT-5 is going to be announced. I don't know if it's currently in there. They haven't said if it's currently being trained, which I think there might be some rumors that it's, you know, well into training. But these things do take time, months and months, hundreds of millions of dollars. So it's interesting. But I think that this could be either, you know, being purchased for GPT-5 or if it's already well into GPT-5, maybe GPT-6, and they realize that it needs to be more powerful. So it's going to be interesting. I think there's also some big implications for the AI industry as a whole. This is People are saying this is going to be make it much better for drug discovery, climate modeling, autonomous vehicle technology. A lot of these things that use just an insane amount of compute are all of a sudden going to be able to be done with these new chips that are faster, more efficient. If, you know, we don't start seeing companies like Grok really, I don't know, the Grok thinks that they're going to be like used by most people by the end of the year. So it'll be interesting to see how these, how these kind of duke it out. But in any case, this is huge news. I'll definitely keep you up to date on everything happening with NVIDIA, these new chips. If you enjoyed the podcast episode today, I would super appreciate it if you could leave us a review wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, whatever. Um, make sure to subscribe if you're on YouTube, hit the bell notification and thumbs up. Really appreciate you all. Hope that you all have an amazing rest of your day.